Good evening, everyone. You are watching Social Chatter, your weekly social media marketing talk show. My name is Christian Karasevich. Uh, tonight, we've got a few changes. These are great changes. Um, Nick is on mm -hmm. vacation. It was his birthday last week. Happy birthday, Nick. Ooh, um, happy birthday, Nick. Happy birthday. And <laughs> this week, uh, we've got a couple of, uh, one, we've got a new guest, and we also have uh, a new co-host for the week, and that's Jessica Phillips. She's filling in for... Hey. Uh, she's filling in for Nick, so I'm going to bring Jessica up real quick here. And uh, Jessica is uh, president of Now Marketing Group. Uh, put on a fantastic conference, uh, Social Media Week Lima 2017. What was that? About two weeks ago. Yes. So about two weeks ago. That's and, exactly. Um, so uh, so tonight we have uh, we have Carrie on. Carrie is with um, Idea Idea Girl Media. And so I'm going to bring uh, yeah. we're going to bring Carrie on. We're going to have Jessica introduce her. Yay! I'm super excited to have Carrie with us today. It's kind of like a little reunion from our Social Media Week conference in Lima, Ohio. But Carrie is the founder and CMO of Idea Girl Media. She's an international social media marketing agency partnering with businesses and brands, public figures, and more to optimize, customize online marketing strategies digital marketing campaigns, and social media training. She's leading her insiders club um, and entrepreneurs and small business owners that fuels her enthusiasm for business growth and development topics. As um, Chris mentioned, she's the founder of Idea with Girl Media, and she's a Sprout social all-star. She actually brought some Sprout swag with her to Social Media Week Live. Very well received. She's the top 100 CMOs to follow on Twitter and she's received a Small Business Influencer Honorable Mention Award, award and um, Outstanding Attainment in Social Media from the Senate of Ohio. There's so much more to learn about, Carrie, and I'm sure we'll dive into that in today's chat. But welcome, Carrie. Good to see you again. Hey, great to see you too, Jessica. Thanks for having me on. Christa, uh, Christian and Jessica, we're really happy to be here and very excited to see you so soon after we were just together in Lima, Ohio. Yeah, it's funny we meet each other more on online than anywhere else. We're both in Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a by last week when I was close by on my vacation. I should have stopped by last week, but nah, <laughs> boy, that was. Uh... And, and by the way, important. that's one of the fantastic yeah. things about uh, you know just about social media is just being able to have you know to build these relationships. Um, to build these relationships online, but then you know to make sure that you know you're taking them beyond just like you know, having these personal relationships online and, and meeting in person. You know, we were at a conference um, and that's where we all met. Um, but, you know, again, I mean, it could be, you know, like Jessica said, just stopping in, you know, if you happen to be nearby, um, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, remembering, you know, it's not just about you or your business. It's about what you can do to help others. So be sure you keep Absolutely. that in mind. So uh, we got a lot of great topics for everybody today. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is I want to encourage everyone who's watching, um, if you're watching the uh, live video, be sure you go on and click that share link. Um, if you want to tag somebody, uh, you can type the at sign and then the person's name. That will invite them to uh, watch the Facebook live stream. And we're using the hashtag social chatter as well. So if you put that in there um, on Facebook, on Twitter, um, wherever, uh, we'll, be our, we'll do our best to get to you know, any questions or anything that you might have. Tag Nick in it too and tell him happy birthday today. Yes, that's a fantastic Well, this week. Idea. We're celebrating all week. So tag him, let him know you're still watching the show, and let him know happy birthday. And that's Nick <laughs> Rishwain. So it's at um, Nick, and I think you'll probably come up with J and then Rishwain. Yeah. So, um, so let's kick off some topics today. We've got a, a lot of really great ones today. Uh, Jessica, do you want to start with uh, – what do you want to start with? Do you want to start with Instagram? you want to talk about you know, some Snapchat yeah. ones? Which one? Sure, let's start with the Instagram because they had a cool rollout. And these are for all the people that are using photo and video in their stories. But Instagram introduces photo and video replies in their stories. So just another fun way of replying back to friends, letting them know that you're checking out their stories above and beyond just, you know, you used to only be able to see like the little views and the icons of people's heads um, that they viewed your story, now you can actually reply back with your own photo or video in Instagram. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I think it just makes it more social, more personal, and um, I think more together friendly, 
That's a pretty cool picture. I am. Um, I was more Facebook stories than Instagram stories, but this could pull me over more frequently. So what do y'all what do y'all think as far as you know? So let's just kind of go around the horn here. Okay. So do you think that there's something that um, you know stories like it's you know Jessica and I were talking about this earlier, but it's getting more and more difficult for people just to take you know links and just post them up on these channels, right? You have to tell a story. Um, what do you recommend you know to everyone that's uh, watching tonight as far as you know creating in their own story? Like how do they need to tell a story? Uh, and, and we know, you know, it's not just copy the link from one channel, paste it on Facebook, and hey, let's paste it on Twitter, let's paste it on Instagram. What do y'all recommend? Um, let's start with uh, Jessica. I guess it just depends what your goal is with your stories. It's like if you're trying to add some personalization to you as like a personal figure or, um, you know, just to show your human side and let people get to know you a little bit more, you may have a completely different approach than someone else that's really trying to maybe sell a product or push their business, right? I think if you're trying to push your business or your brand, you're going to go more into like an entertainment, um, you know, you're going to edutainment, if you will, so you're going to really try to educate and entertain at the same time, so you may take like a daily check-in, um, maybe post some quick bites out there and then draw people back into something if you're doing uh, behind the scenes of you or your brand it may be a little less informal and you're really just showing like what's happening in your day so it just depends on what your goals are i think i agree it does uh, it does depend on your goals i hope i didn't like, interrupt or anything <laughs> i think if you can be a tad progressive where you know maybe at the beginning of the week you start in one place and by the end of the week you're you're kind of building to a certain point. I think that's kind of fun if you have mm -hmm. the um, the purpose to do it. Just an idea. But I think also it's very important to be spontaneous and authentic, if at all possible. And by the way, I yeah. really like the point you just made up. You know about talking, or the point you made about you know talking like at the beginning of the week, like having almost like a goal every single week of what you're going to accomplish. Maybe mm -hmm. um, that that's I think idea. can actually help you improve your storytelling. Um, because a lot of people, I mean, they go into this, and this is probably, you know, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think that, you know, most people probably go about uh, the standard, you know, way of doing things every single day. And then uh, Friday hits and they're like, you know, wow, where did the week go? They're not thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. They're not planning ahead. And I think in order to be successful with storytelling, you have to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. I do I think though, that there's an element of that fun, unique, oh my gosh, look what happened just, just now. I think there's a place for that too, though. I do too. Yeah. And different platforms have different things. Like for Facebook, for me, like it's more about getting to know everyone more personally on my personal channel. So I will share more things about my family and some of the things about what's happening in my day that have nothing to do with business, right? Some of it may, but a lot of it in between does not. So I don't really do a great job of storytelling. It's more like, here's a more intimate side of what I'm doing on the daily that I'm not going to post in a million Facebook post updates, right? Um, but on the brand channel, you know, on Instagram, that's something that I would take a more storytelling approach to. So it just completely varies, I think, by platform and purpose of what you're trying to do. So I really like the idea building up, you know, during the week to an end idea. I think that's something I would use honestly and recommend to clients. It's a really good idea. So if somebody's first getting started and they're trying to figure out well, which platform, you know, every every platform essentially has storytelling, uh, a storytelling aspect to it. Um, how do you, you know, what do you think a business should do um, to figure out kind of what platform they should start with? Is there, you know, like, should they just jump into Instagram? Should they jump into, you know, Facebook stories? What do you think? And feel free, anyone who wants to. Let's yeah. let Carrie go with that one first. So I think that, first of all, you have to be where you're comfortable because if you're not comfortable, telling your story is going to be pretty ineffective and, and it'll be obvious that you're not comfortable, which then it makes it hard to tell your story. So I think, you know, think about where you are. Where are you already? Are you already on Facebook? Hop there first. Give it a try. Um, if, if that doesn't work, then go and check out what Instagram and Snapchat are about. Um, start where you're comfortable and then build or adjust. That's why I and keep moving there. That's good stuff. Absolutely. Keep moving. Yeah. So anything anyone else? Wants I to think that's really good advice. So I have a random question on this you know, topic. So we're talking about Instagram. We're talking about Facebook. Um, Instagram seems to be, you know, adding a lot more features. 
Um, do we think that maybe at some point, you know, I, I hadn't thought about this, but do we think that Instagram might like just totally overtake Facebook at some point since everything is moving towards that whole visual side of things, you know, uh, videos, photos? No. No. I, I don't personally think that Facebook's going anywhere. I think Facebook's evolving a lot with their messenger platform. I think when we actually, even at the conference, when we were going around kind of talking about what our social favorite social platform is, I think Facebook's here to stay. More people are there. More people are comfortable there. And my favorite platform, actually, is their messenger feature of Facebook, right? And I think where they're going with that um, is just going to keep evolving, and now you can schedule your plans in there. I think we organized this whole show today through Facebook Messenger. It's just comfortable. It's easy. Um, you can get a bunch of people, groups together. They're rolling out new features. And Facebook is rolling out more with Facebook for work and um, Facebook groups now inside business pages and uh, Facebook jobs. And, you know, they're just evolving at a rapid rate. I don't see them replacing are uh, being replaced, I should say, by any other social platform. I think all the other social platforms still have their pay, their place, Snapchat included. Um, even though I've never really jumped on that Snapchat bandwagon, <laughs> they're evolving too, actually. Um, they're, I know in your lineup today of tips to talk about. Yes. So uh, can I just approach uh, Christian your question? Sure. I think that if anything does happen, if anything is overtaken per se, I think that Instagram will kind of be enveloped into Facebook because I don't think Facebook will ever let anything mm -hmm. overtake it that it already owns, but I think it'll kind of fit together. Like the iPhone, you have your apps, you know, and I think it'll begin to fit together a tad more conveniently for everyone. That's what I see happening because you're right. I mean, with Facebook Messenger, there are some people, I don't even know their email address anymore, but I know I can hit them up on that Messenger and reach them like this and we're good to go. Um, I see that really being a place of communication and also fun to share, depending on, on how you approach it. But I do see that there could be a place for Instagram to kind of fit inside Facebook. Yeah, and they're already starting to integrate a lot of that with pages right now, right? Um, yeah. So you can go to your Facebook page, your business page, and you see you know, your Instagram updates and everything right within there. If you've linked them together, you can do the ads together, so that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. And Jessica, by the way, how, how do they get to the uh, notifications in Facebook to see, um, you know, all of their notifications together? Is that is it only available on mobile? Is it a desktop feature? You can do both. So um, mobile is super convenient on the Pages app. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but um, on the Pages app, let me go to my page so it's not. Somebody else is here. Um, so on the Pages app, and this is going to be like an extreme uncomfortable close-up, though, huh? Go to a brand page here. If you go to any of the, the pages app itself and you go to your actual brand page that you're trying to get to, mm -hmm. you go to your notifications, which is like that little world down at the bottom. I don't know if you can see this at all. Probably not with my light there. I can't tell. But anyway, the world down at the bottom, um, and then there's this little inbox that's right beside it. So the notifications show up in the world, and then the little inbox is kind of like an empty tray, but it has a notification number next to it. And it'll tell you if it's a Facebook update or an Instagram update if you move over, um, and it lets you kind of check them off. So you actually have to click through them to check them off to say that you've responded or seen or, you know, um, liked the comments, all that to make sure you got through those. But to get to your settings to connect them together, you just go to your Facebook business page, go to settings, top your right hand corner when you're on your business page, mm -hmm. and then you can go um, to your page settings, kind of go through them, go to Instagram um, on the left hand side, and sign in Instagram and link it together. Very nice. Right yeah. I use it almost daily. I'm with that together on my Facebook page notifications. It's pretty handy. Yeah, absolutely. So let's move into the next top. What do you all think? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So I will post this link in there. Do you want to talk about Snapchat? Sure. And yeah, the let's links? talk about some Snapchat here. So I, and I know everybody is very, uh, a lot of people are down on Snapchat and the fact that, you know, they don't mm -hmm. think that they're going to stick around. They think they're having a hard time growing their users. But I got to say, some of these features, I was thinking about this as I was reviewing these articles this week. And uh, what Snapchat has essentially done is they're now letting you add links 
voice filters and backdrop backdrops to snaps. Um, so they, you know, this is important because previously Snapchat did not allow uh, anyone to include mm-hmm. links in your snaps. They wanted you to obviously stay on the platform. Um, so they're doing a bit of a reverse uh, here, you know, of course, basically. And so uh, what they're doing is they're they're letting you um, add links, you know, and some other features. Call them paperclip. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. They call it paperclip actually. Um, and what it does, mm-hmm. basically, you can attach a website to a snap that your friends can swipe up to to open in Snap's internal browser. Now, that's the part I really like because a lot of people, they, they see this and they think, oh, Snapchat's not going to let you do, you know, they're going to take you out of Snapchat. It's like, no, they're going to basically have a window within the app, which, you know, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, so that's feature one they're adding. Uh, that's probably the most important feature. But aside from this, they're also adding two other things. One is a voice feature. It's called voice filters. They let you remix the sound of voices in your mm-hmm. snaps. If I'm a business, I'm not sure yeah. how, you know, I'm not sure how useful I'm going to find that feature. But I like the backdrop feature, actually, which lets you cut yourself out, um, basically to make it stick out. And I'll talk more about that here in a mm-hmm. second. But um, let's bring everybody up. So what do you all think about these updates? Um, you know, one snap. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Jessica. No. I was going to say, I think it's smart of them to add the links in there. I think that's one thing that was missing from businesses really opting in because they couldn't see, how can I take advantage of this right now? Um, because it's very much a long game um, with Snapchat for brands unless they're using some kind of influencer. So I think this gives them the, uh, the tools that they need maybe to in- integrate more of, hey, here's how to get to my link. Um, that's going to come with the good and the bad with that. Um, I am happy to see, though, that Snapchat has partnered with Google Safe Browsing Service. So it does monitor the links and phishing scams and warn people about potential you know, malware or phishing or dangerous sites um, that may not be appropriate so that's a good thing but i'm sure it's gonna you know cause other people to want to abuse some of those features as well in paperclip yeah i like there's also an eraser feature so you can take something out of the background in your photo that you just really Mm -hmm. don't that was fun today Uh, really for me snapchat has been a place i do have some stuff in my memories and i keep it up there and i have done things that that will um like I'll say, hey, I'm doing a live today, or or I, if I would have had time, I would have put it up our live for today. Mm-hmm. But it's usually this, I communicate with my daughter on that. It's, we do the goofy pose of the day. That's what we do. But the, but I could see how the, the backdrops would be helpful. The link now. They also have that map. Um, you can click on the, the image, put your map. Yeah, the snap map. Um, it, as a business, that's pretty helpful if you have a brick and mortar or you're at a conference per se, you want people to mm-hmm. attend. That's pretty cool. Um, I, I'm glad to see the growth. It, it was kind of mm-hmm. stagnant for a while in a way that was like, well, so now what? You know? Yeah. Great point. By the way, and, and here's a tip actually uh, for people that are on Snapchat. If you want to get... Uh, for example, let's say you're at a conference or you're, you know, you're in a room, let's say you're a presenter and you want to encourage people to add you on Snapchat. Quick, uh, quick tip. What you can actually do is you can turn your, uh, the find option to let people, you know, make yourself discoverable. And then all people have to do is go on Snapchat, see all the people that are in the room and they can easily shoot right down the list and add, uh, everybody in that room, for example. And that way you don't have to like, you know, weed out everyone else. Cause essentially it's all, you know, mm-hmm. all really convenient there for you. So, uh, yeah, Chris says links are great. The other two updates I can take or leave it. I agree with you, Chris. So I mean, it's cool. I mean, it's all about visual content. That's what Snapchat's so about. But thing, that whole voice filters thing, that that to me is like take it or leave it. I think you know, mm-hmm. and and well, you know, let me let me start on the like. Let's talk about the the voice filters first. So if I'm a business, so if I'm looking at you know the average business, I'm probably not going to be using those voice filters, but. You also have to keep in mind, as Jessica's mentioned here, you know, which I think is a great, uh, great thing here. She mentioned, you know, this is a long play with Snapchat. Um, I think that the voice filters could actually be very useful down the road as Snapchat starts to get into TV shows because they have uh, quite mm-hmm. a few deals uh, potentially going on here with, like, you know, I think what Disney I think's on on board. You got other couple of couple other, um, I think what Bloomberg maybe, mm-hmm. but the voice filters to me at least yeah. could conceivably become essentially almost like selling like geo filters, for instance, inside of the app for like six bucks. Hey, let's sell voice filters and let's sell like, you know, branded ones. Let's sell Disney ones, for instance, 
where you could turn yourself into you know, yeah. Donald Duck or something like that. I think it's smart because Snapchat is that storytelling platform and the more creative, the the better, right? So I think like Chocolate Johnny comes to mind with his little minions, right? And the voice that he put with all of them. Like he blew up because he was a great storyteller and used those kinds of features in order to tell his story in a creative way. So I think the more people that use it in that way, it can definitely double down their brand. But again, like we said, it's that long-term game and, and long-term play. So it, it just all depends how much patience and dedication and consistency that brands want to spend and involve into that platform. And they'll have to either double down or get out, I think, in order to make it work. I think the one thing to remember here is to use the features yeah. that lend well to your brand and what your brand stands for. So, you know, your, your brand may not be good for those voice filters, but it may be really great for those visual filters or, you know, vice versa. Mm -hmm. So just pick up those features and, and really hone in on, on what works and what lends to your brand. The thing I really like, you know, you, you all are mentioning this. You talk about storytelling. You're talking about like, you, you know, you've, Jessica, you brought up some really great examples. Chocolate Johnny, for example. You know, it's about finding your voice mm -hmm. as a business and not just being like, you know, a mm -hmm. package. Like, hey, I have this T-shirt, for instance. Mm -hmm. Like, do something creative. Um, for example, you know, we're talking about like T-shirts. Uh, there's a company, uh, LaCroix, they make water. And one thing they were doing at one point was they were having, you know, a battle back and forth between their different flavors. Um, so some really neat things there going on. Mm -hmm. So they were taking this inanimate object. You know, if you kind of think about this, if you think about the whole, um, uh, for those of you who've ever watched a Pixar movie, for instance, you know, Toy Story, Cars, mm -hmm. uh, Planes, uh, which was my favorite, Fi uh, not Finding Nemo, but uh, all of those Disney movies, or sorry, Pixar movies, yeah. what they basically have done is, they have taken objects and they have made them come to life. And you as a business need to think about that when you are uh, trying to tell your story. Come up with something creative based on you know, your product, mm -hmm. whether it is creating a story itself around a product or telling your whole company's history, for instance. Or have a great personality. You know, like there's others that um, just know they have their voice. They found it and they double down on it. Um, JLD, you know, John mm -hmm. D. Loomis, uh, Entrepreneur on Fire, he does a great job on Snapchat. Um, Carlos Gill has been on there, um, does a great job. You know, there's others in the industry that have done a really great job um, being consistent with it, though, and then they find and build up their following from there. So um, let's. So I want to just quickly last talk about this, uh, this other feature, the backdrops feature. And mm -hmm. you know, I know this doesn't seem very important, um, to most people, you know, backdrops, big deal, but you also have to remember Snapchat is a camera company. And this is the part that I think is actually going to be really valuable for this. So I actually have a feeling that Snapchat is, you know, I'm actually wondering, are they going to actually say, hey, you know what, we're going to have this network. We're going to give you, they're, they're putting these really cool tools in place. Um, in this case, it's, you know, lets you cut out an object from your snap and put a colorful or artsy pattern behind it. So it basically lets you create depth, create layers on your, uh, your snaps. Um, it gives you the ability to insert a layer of imagery between objects and the real background and gives people a creative way to augment the world behind them, not just their faces. So I'm actually wondering here, just, you know, as we kind of have, have talked a lot more about Snapchat here, um, is Snapchat, you know, their, their camera company, are they going to evolve into actually maybe just making a camera that can kind of like do all of this like cool, like augmented reality type stuff, um, you know, and, and layering in some of these tools? Because a lot of these tools they're mentioning, um, being able to, for instance, cut somebody out from a backdrop, Typically, you have to be a pretty good video editor to do that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if you want any, you know, if you, I mention this all the time. If you want motion, like things that follow, for instance, as you're moving your head or whatnot or rolling your eyes, um, mm -hmm. all of those things are things where like you have to add tracking. And typically, you had to have expensive software. And you don't need that with Snapchat. I'm wondering if that's maybe the direction they might be going. What do you all think? I think they're starting. Is, is what I'm seeing. But I don't know if either of you have this, those spectacles. Do you have the spectacles? I don't. Yeah. I don't. Friend Jeff that's on here does. Jeff T. Haven. <laughs> Played with his. <laughs> so I think what they're going to do is they're going to need to come, whatever they're going to, it's going to fit into that. So um, yeah. if, if the spectacle can do that, that's what they'll do. And, and I can see that's good. There you go. So I think Christian, maybe you're the one who can really answer this one, but I think they're just starting. They're just beginning and they're offering us like the, uh, the, the beginning of the fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. So as Jessica mentioned, you know, the takeaway here, stay patient with Snapchat. 
it's a long play. Uh, you know, as Carrie mentioned here as well, um, you know, it's about you know, really just you know, being patient with this as a business. Um, you know, figuring out your story and you know, doing what's you know, if it's not going to work mm-hmm. on one channel, like figure out the you know, go to the next one and try some different things, or look at some brands, for instance, that are you know, that are already using it um, to get some ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Go okay. people out, go brands out, study a little bit. So, uh, yeah. let's move into a little Facebook. Here's a way. Here, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Jessica. I was going to say, here's a way to check out more brands and get a lot more work done. Facebook is allowing you to expand Wi Fi globally and find those Wi Fi hotspots. So, when you're kind of in that dead zone, you can search out and see what else is near you or some free Wi Fi when your data get low. So, Super helpful feature. That is a very good point. By the way, I, lo- I love the segue there. The transition that was perfect. <laughs> I try. Okay. <laughs> so what do we have going on here? So okay, so uh, so how does this whole feature work? This whole you know uh, expand you know Facebook expanding Wi-Fi globally. Um, what, what what's going on here? Like, is this you know how do I go about using this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Facebook allows you if you go to your home screen on Facebook. Um, natively in the app um, on your iPhone then or Android phone I guess there are some Android users um, but you could go and there's lots of different features there but you will notice that there's one that says Wi-Fi so you can find Wi-Fi excuse me so when you go and scroll to find Wi-Fi it's going to bring up uh, find Wi-Fi and then you will see a map of all the locations near you and how to get there. Um, and it's a way for brands to announce that they have free Wi-Fi at their spot and hence attracting more people to come visit them. So their name actually comes up um, for the Wi-Fi that's closest to you. I don't know if you can see this on my phone or not. But um, cool. Yeah, so, and then you can say visit their page, get directions, everything right from there. So I think this is a great play. I know, like, Starbucks really grew. They were kind of the first coffee shop to op- offer free Wi-Fi, and it, it grew from that. So I know that there's a lot more cellular brands that are, um, or cellular, I guess, companies that are offering, like, the unlimited Wi-Fi, but there's still a place, definitely, for the free Wi-Fi. I know when I was starting my business, I always looked for the coffee shops before I had in my own office and space that had free Wi-Fi in it. Um, so it's definitely going to attract, you know, certain crowds of people and those those road warriors that are always traveling needing a, a Wi-Fi spot. I think it's interesting that we just heard about the Aquila. They were doing more testing on the, the expanding um, connection worldwide. And then we mm-hmm. see this come out. But do you see what happened there? We're all about the data, and you know, there's Facebook ads in the in the distance here of our conversation. There's not a better value around than Facebook ads because of all the data you can drill down to. Mm-hmm. So if you're thinking about, okay, I want to, I want to focus on businesses. I want to reach business mm-hmm. owners or whatever. Who has Wi-Fi? That's another piece of data that I think mm-hmm. we're going to see. So geofencing too. What was that? geofencing around specific areas too and you can see how many people are checked into this location's wi-fi potentially and bam you know yep geofence around it lots of um things just kind of, kind of brought that 360 it's like the, the circle is, is is being colored in i think very cool and i have to say this yeah so uh one of the, you know a number of years ago i think it was, was it google i think said they wanted to blanket everywhere with free wi-fi Mm-hmm. Well, it didn't really come to fruition, basically. Um, so Google, you know, nothing really happened there. Uh, so I'm actually wondering also if, you know, if this is maybe uh, Facebook's way to also compete with Google a little bit more, you know, since obviously Google kind of mm-hmm. search. Um, this is a way to kind of, you know, steal some people away um, to get more people onto Facebook, to keep them on Facebook, um, potentially, you know, to, to basically expand that network without actually, like, It was a remixed version of Christian's update. <laughs> Facebook book. It'll be uh, on iTunes later for purchase if you guys <laughs> just would like to download it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I somehow <laughs> lost my computer, but. Um, <laughs> All right. But I, have to, so cool. I have to say, though, on the, this, whole, uh, this whole Wi-Fi thing, I think that, um, you know, if I'm a business, I, like, so I'll ask you all this question. Like, do you think that a business... For instance, if I'm in like you know Europe or I'm in some foreign country, I think that this makes a lot of sense to have the find 
uh, Wi-Fi feature, like for instance, for me as a business to be offering this, because if I'm in another country, mm-hmm. most people they don't have data plans that ha- you know that really kind of expand out. Although I know a lot of the carriers are trying to, you know, they're starting to have to change this to where they kind of have to, you know, can't charge you like all the ridiculous fees. But if I'm a business and I'm international, I think it makes a lot of sense for me to have my fine Wi-Fi feature set up uh, for my business. Because as you mentioned, I mean, it pulls up my page, it pulls up the Wi-Fi, the fact that I have Wi-Fi, I've got features and benefits. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's a huge yeah. thing to have. Little big restaurants, coffee shops, everything. I mean, they have the check-in feature. You know, they can get the beacon still there so they can promote the free Wi-Fi, then offer that kind of check-in message. I think it's a super smart way of driving, driving people in. Yeah, I mean, the first thing I would do if I'm traveling, and I didn't really know the area, I would go to that that um, more feature, find the free Wi-Fi, see, pull up the pages. I mean, it's kind of like your your yellow pages. It's it's your, like, 360 yellow pages. I can find the page, the phone number, the web address, get free Wi-Fi. It, it's kind of like the, um, the new wave um, resource in your pocket because it's on your mobile. Now, exactly. Do you think that with that feature, do you think that a business should charge some, like almost have like almost like an entrance fee or something to be able to pay mm. for that? Service? No. Like for instance, buy a you know, no. buy a coffee. That's their marketing. Else. They're getting marketing from it. You know, think of the possibilities. This is marketing, mm-hmm. one, and it's adding to that overall experience, which you know that's a way of getting people in. So um, to their door, and they're going to hang out there longer. So they're probably going to spend you know um, more money there um, because they're hanging out there. So or they're at least going to buy something, right, um, when they're there. Or they could do something like what you know Panera does, and a few other places do, where they limit it to like an hour during the lunch rush hour or something, um, which they could tell people when they get there. But um, you know, they, they have other settings that they can set up to kind of control the, the misuse. Of that, I uh, I would offer a coupon of some kind if I could attach it somehow to the to the experience there because if I have people coming to my door and I can offer them a coupon to use whatever service or buy whatever product that helps them with this this whatever's happening whatever my brand's about I just think it ties everything together it's like the reason you're there and it and it, it invites the people to be part of what you're doing and and connect with you yeah you in a way that you know, I, you could almost run like Or a- share why you Wi-Fi. <laughs> Do what? I would say just share why you Wi-Fi. Like have some kind of, um, when they check in, like just get them to share why they Wi-Fi or what they're doing there. And, you know, that way it's creating more brand exposure and doubling down on that free marketing, mm-hmm. right? But they're they're getting out of it. I mean, you can see. <clears throat> I don't yeah, tend to ahead. check in on Facebook. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I don't tend to check in on Facebook just for... For me, it's a safety reason, mm-hmm. and and kind of where I'm located, it, it's a little bit different here. It, you know, because it's easier to pinpoint and say, "Oh, hi, I'm gone." You know, come and rob my house. Mm-hmm. But um, so I use Foursquare or Swarm for that. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, if you're in a metropolitan area and you can get people to check in, that's just so awesome. Yeah. I mean, it'd be great. To, you know, another thing you could also potentially do here is, you know, a business could offer the Wi-Fi feature and then have somebody check in, have like a check-in deal associated with it. like check-in and mm-hmm. get free Wi-Fi because the check-in, you know, when somebody checks in, it's going to then share with their audience the fact that I checked in at this location. Um, you know, they're not going to know that I got free Wi-Fi, for instance, but hey, maybe I'll update my status update and say, I'm excited because I got free Wi-Fi, um, you know, or something to that effect. Yeah, um, I was trying to find this app. There was actually this this app that was rolled out, I'm trying to find out where it is, but um, or what the name was. But essentially, that's what they did. But you had to post a picture of yourself when you checked in, and then it unlocked a special offer right then and there. Um, and they had it directly associated to, like, bars or different establishments like that, and they had a different drink special, like a free shot of Jameson or free whatever. Um, and that was rolled out at the Collision Conference. I see more brands trying to do things like that just to get that exposure. You know, it's their way of kind of creating influence. It's smart. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. that's, that's a fantastic point, by the way, you know, is, like that both of you are making, that it's not about like saying, hey, I'm going to like, it's not like what's in it for me as a business and saying, hey, I got to make a sale here, for instance. I need to think of what can I do mm-hmm. to add value to my business. In this case, this is a win. I mean, 
doesn't cost any, you know, great, you get an internet service. You probably already have one there. You set up a guest network or something. You then tie mm -hmm. it into, you know, as Jessica mentioned, to beacons. Uh, you know, uh, as Carrie's mentioned, we were talking about, you know, like checking in, um, you know, having features like that. And all that's going to help do some of that free marketing, essentially, for you. Um, it's just being smart with how you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, smart. Well, I think everybody wins. Smart. Yeah. We, have, we have to remember the one rule. It's not about us. It's about them. Smart. And if you're about them or your, your people, then everything comes together. Yeah. Facebook is all about them and not us. They actually rolled out the next update. Christian, if you're ready to move on to that, talking about the, the getting rid of some of that spam that where companies are trying to just shove all them down their throat <laughs> with the links. Yep. So what we have here is uh, Facebook is looking to show more informative links in their news feed. And they're looking to, with this, they're basically looking to uh, get rid of a lot of that spam, as Jessica mentioned, a lot of that low quality content, things that are clickbaitish. Um, but a couple of things I also found interesting, they talked about getting rid of sensationalism and misinformation. Um, basically, if people are sharing content, they want to reduce that uh, content that is being shared, basically deprioritize it in the, in the news feed. Um, you know, this is for like people that, you know, maybe are just over sharers, basically, or, um, mm -hmm. you know, individual articles and that type of thing. Um, so how do y'all feel about this, by the way? Because I know, you know, when people start to talk about newsfeed, people start to get very worried about it. Oh, Facebook's not going to show mm -hmm. my page updates. Um, yeah. How do y'all feel? Well, first of all, I've noticed recently that my pages are getting more engagement just all of a sudden, like, boom, like, boom, the numbers are up. So I wonder what they're testing. But... In that news release, they were talking about people posting 50 links a day. I just don't even know, how do you have time for that? I, how do you get 50 links in? So, mm -hmm. I don't know about that. But I think this is a good thing. I think they're, mm -hmm. they're bringing everything quality over quantity, which is a really awesome thing. And I think it, it, it brings us to a point where we're actually, instead of curating crazy content and trying to get people's attention, we're actually creating things that amplify our brand and that engage people and that just bring us together in a way that's productive. Yeah. Agreed. And I mean, Facebook is not shy in telling you what they're going to dock you for. It's honestly just like what Carrie mentioned, talking about not spamming and it's not about us, it's about them, them being the people that we're trying to help. That if it's not clickbaity or spam, or just overwhelming, you know, bad, poor content, then they're not going to show it. They're using this algorithm to say, is it original content? Is it content that's valuable and helpful, meaning that it's getting, it's relevant, timely, and people are already going to this? So they're looking to see how many people are talking about it online, right? Um, how many people are willing to click on it, and the kinds of content that you're using to kind of amp it up. So if you go to Facebook's policies, um, actually I just posted the link in the notes here, but they tell you their basic guidelines on what they consider good content and poor content. So they give you the things that are going to hurt you and kind of dis diminish some of your engagement. So if you're posting original thoughtful content that is focused on this, Carrie mentioned quality over quantity, then you're gonna still win with engagement and with your fans versus just overwhelming and sharing kind of poor content. I do think this is really going to help those companies that are um, that you can use to kind of get that curated content that are screening and letting you know what content is relevant and already performing well. So as you go to curate content on your Facebook page, you can look and see the content that's performing well in addition to your own to help you get that more engagement natively within Facebook. I think that's another way of kind of getting more engagement there. Good tip there. Good tip. So what do you th what do you think about you know from uh, from the perspective of like you know uh, so by the way and a couple of things about this Facebook also says you know this update is only going to apply to links such as an individual article it's not going to apply to a domain mm -hmm. so they're not going to block a domain they're not going to block a page um, they're not going to block videos photos check ins or status updates so you know status mm -hmm. updates is a typical like you know basic status update versus mm -hmm. um, hey check out this new article I wrote um, with a link obviously like a link preview but um, what do you think as far as, for instance, you think over time, would it make sense, you know, would you like to see maybe Facebook, um, if they had 
had anything that you shared, almost like giving you a report um, to give you access to like, you know, say, hey, well, like if I'm doing this like a hundred times and you keep removing it, but I don't really hear about it, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep doing it. Um, do you think that Facebook should maybe make mm -hmm. some of that data available to users? I mean, they do in a sense and in insights, right? I mean, they tell you like which, they don't tell you why. They just show you kind of the engagement. Um, and um, like, I think that if they had a relevancy score, kind of like how they do with ads, that would be super smart, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't know if they're there yet and how they, I mean, they're Facebook, they, they're geniuses, but I don't know how they could do that on that mass scale with a relevancy score on everything that's published, especially with those companies that are publishing 50 links a day. That would be kind of ridiculous. But I think you could get an overall like um, content rate score or something, maybe as a for a page as a whole, mm -hmm. maybe like how relevant your content is because now they're trying to drill down and ask you more specifically who your audience is. Um, what you what category and niche you fit into kind of we're starting to see the page different templates that businesses can grow into you know and the response time score I think maybe they are kind of scoring brands behind the scene and niching them down but maybe just not making that information public because they don't want this outrage of why why me why am I only getting you know this much score versus mm -hmm. somebody else that isn't I think they eventually will give us more information I think right now they're just trying to figure figure out, you know, how it all fits together. There used to be a tool that I used, and I, I don't know if it's still around, but I think it was called Pageolizer. They would actually tell you how you're doing with stuff on your page. So this would be a great thing for them to pick up if they're still around, I think. Yeah. yeah. I would, I would, Aurora Pulse does that as well. Mm -hmm. They have not, they have Lycalizer. Let me see. That's There's Lycalizer. Maybe it was Lycalizer. I'm actually checking to see if it's still up. So you can put a Facebook page in. Yeah, I see. Go ahead, Carrie. Well, I haven't used it in a while, but if they're still around, this would be perfect for them to pick up and, and go to that edit insight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know we use Agora Pulse, and that is built in there as well. Um, and then you can see other brand pages like you, kind of how you compare against them mm -hmm. within that category. And I think there might be another tool as well. Uh, there's so there's Pageolizer, there's uh, uh, Likealizer. I mean, Likealizer seems to still pull up some stuff. Um, I haven't tried that before. They're kind of an, you know Likealizer is interesting because they're basically analyzing things like uh, you know your, do you have a username on your page? Do you have about information? Um, do you have your location on there? Do you have you know milestones? For instance, like who cares about milestones? Um, they're not, you know, those are kind of like, have kind of gone away. Uh, milestones, that's like your personal page, right? Yeah, yeah well, and yeah, this is what Michaelizer is actually showing right now if you go through it. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, there are some other really neat features on here. For instance, they do show you how many posts per day you're doing. They give you a ranking on that. Um, they also give you uh, some timing options. Actually, I think the timing thing is actually pretty sweet because um, it shows you, you know, like, it, or it basically just says, you know, hey, for your timing, uh, this is basically, are you posting your content when your audience is typically on your page or on Facebook? And in my case, it's saying like way mm. off uh, for one of my pages I was analyzing. So Nice. It's by Meltwater. Okay, cool. Yeah, and that should be I'll post a link in here to that. By the way, Carrie, thanks for bringing mm. that one up. That's a good one. Yeah, sure. My pleasure. Um, I don't know where you're putting links, so um, if you could follow up with me like give me a list at the end or something or tell me where to go to get it? Yeah, sure. We're um, just a Social Chef's Facebook page. Okay. And the video. So, okay. uh, by the way, uh, do we have any questions over on Facebook at all? Uh, not, currently. not currently. I'm refreshing now. <laughs> now that I can reach the keyboard here. <laughs> try. Yes. I'm trying. Anyway, for those of you watching, it was a bit of a joke because uh, we were trying to get everybody's cameras set up properly and whatnot to get, you know, uh, to get everything yeah. good. So, um, so let's jump into some tools real quick and then we'll wrap some, wrap everything up early. What do y'all think? Good idea. Yeah. Okay. Sure. You know, we, it's, it's about valuing everyone's time, you know, as well. So, you know, I value the fact that, uh, Jessica and Carrie both have, uh, you know, decided to give us some time tonight to, um, you know, to help with the show. So, um, first of all, I want to talk about, it's called stencil. Um, this is a, you know, basically it's a tool for, uh, helping you create images for your social media channels, for your blogs, uh, blog posts uh, for your small business outside of just you know 
um, some you know standard stock graphics. Um, pretty slick, pretty easy to add. Works on uh, desktop, works on a tablet. Um, very similar to Canva. Um, you know, I should have this one actually up. I think it's up for everybody. Let's see. Yeah, that's up there. So, um, f you know, again, it's all about like being smart with what you're doing. So if you're a business, you know, you find, for instance, you don't have a lot of time to create um, images for your, you know, for your channels. Um, by the way, you shouldn't be posting 50 times a day on Facebook. That's way, way, way too much. Um, but what this tool does, uh, tool number one, basically, it's, uh, you know, going to help you quickly put together some of the content. Um, one thing I particularly found very interesting about this is I'm looking through, you know, uh, businesses that they've potentially worked with. And we've got, for instance, buffers listed there. We've got Coca-Cola, NYU, NASCAR, um, you know, some really big brands there. And um, I'm actually kind of surprised that buffers there because don't they have their own tool called Pablo? Or are they not using that anymore? Or anybody know about that? I don't know about their tool. I haven't tried it. I haven't been in Buffer in a long time, honestly. Um, I've been using other tools. So. Yeah. Ditto. This looks awesome, though. I actually started trying to play around with it and seemed pretty easy. Um, I'm still kind of on Canva and relay that, but I definitely think I would try this out as a brand. Um, it does look pretty seamless. So I want to play around with it, kind of see what we can design and which is faster of course and yeah i had an account like a long time ago i still get their email newsletters so i kind of hear what they're up to it looks pretty slick now they've grown a lot but i am also a canva user and i use a few other um mm -hmm. deep editing tools for like their specific features that are in there and it tends to be around holiday times like different holidays Mm -hmm. So, question for both of you: Do you typically bounce back and forth between different design tools? Um, do you find that you know, like, well, this one has this feature, this one has another feature that I use, and then I like to kind of you know wrap it up with this other tool? Um, what do you, how do y'all feel about that, or do you think you should use one? I've only used one, honestly, more than anything. Um, you know, I'm trying out another tool because it's a friend's app you know and I want to support them but um, because there's been so much real estate kind of created in the current tool that we're using mm -hmm. and it's shared within our team so we have you know 12 team members plus in this one location sharing graphics for you know hundreds of clients mm -hmm. it's right there it would be really hard to recreate all of that in another tool um, I'm definitely always open to trying something out and just seeing you know maybe for like a personal brand page or something, uh, but it would be really hard to move tools. <laughs> okay. I think at this point, it has to have a really awesome feature enough in order for me to move. Yeah, you know, I I keep getting pitched in my email. Come try this tool. Come do you know? I'm like, no, I just I have my system and I really have to get some stuff done. You know, you kind of feel that way. And the, the tool that I'm using, I'm sure that we share some similarities. Like, all my brand colors are in there. I don't need to reset the color hues. It's, it, and then I've got my, my templates are in there. It, it's, it's Folders are built. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. It, it all becomes a, a system. Um, um, there right. is a tool, and I, I think, you know, we're talking about the same one, that I would really like mm -hmm. to check out and, and support a friend. Um, but, again, you know, you're changing your system. You're changing your... The routine and that's hard especially with images because they're so it's it's important to nail it you need that gif you know ain't nobody got time for that like it's just <laughs> so much but hey like, we're all just struggling to get all the right images here. done we don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Christian? i was gonna say there is a business opportunity i guess in all of this and that's the fact that there yeah. needs to be some sort of migration <laughs> tool between these you know, it doesn't need to be like, oh, let me pay a company to like do all this stuff. Like, yeah, that's a solution, but there needs to be something seamless to be able to transfer uh, assets between mm -hmm. tools. And I know that gets into, you know, well, this company has this licensing deal with this stock photo and this one has this licensing deal, mm -hmm. but there needs to be something to be able to make that seamless. Yeah, because agencies, it's a big job if you've been using something for years, you know, to just say, okay, I like your tool, I'm going to move over. That's a big commitment. Mm -hmm. it, so. it um, but I will tell you that there are certain things that I like to use mobile apps for that I don't uh -huh. necessarily link into what I'm doing on my desktop and the types of things I'm doing there. Can you tell us about those? Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah, well, we're going to talk about one of them in a minute. But, you know, there are a few just really fun ones. Like, um, you know, of course, Ripple is moving images. But I really liked Word Swag for a long time. And then there's a couple that mm -hmm. um, do specific things, like take the background out. Or they'll do fisheye. Or, you know, I think that I have actually, I've created a folder on my mobile um, device that's called Image Center, and I just have like probably like four or five screens of just mobile um, image editing apps. Mm -hmm. I do too. <laughs> I have one for images and one for video. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, and that, but that's a great point that you make. You know, that you mentioned here. And by the way, Apple has iOS 11 coming out in uh, a few months, actually, and it has. Uh, so, for example, you know, what Kara's mentioning here is, you know, having separate apps for certain things. So, for example, if I want to remove the background, I don't have to load, for instance, Photoshop or Pixelmator or uh, uh, Affinity. Uh, you know, I don't, have to, I don't have to load any of those things. And the great thing is because if I only want to do one feature, all I have to do is go to that one little app. My focus is on that one app. I get the job done and I can move to the next step rather than be in there and be like, oh, this is really confusing. It's too much to learn. Uh, but Speaking of that, so Apple has iOS 11 coming out, and they have, they're have they starting to get into some more gestures. So you're actually gonna be able to do really cool things like round trip between apps. Um, so for example, do this in one app, go to this one, and go to this one, and like almost set up a whole sequence. Uh, they also bought an app called Workflow, so I wouldn't be surprised if at some point that kind of lets you string things together, because um, that's kind of the whole point of the app. But um, That'd be nice. Very really good points. So let's, uh, let's bring up that last tool. And uh, by the way, Stencil, um, it is a free app. Uh, there's a hobbyist version. Uh, it's free up to 10 images a month, limited backgrounds, limited icons. Basically, when you go with free, you get limited options. Paid is what, yeah. $9 a month if you pay annually, and then you can go to $18 a month. But as uh, Jessica and Carrie both mentioned, uh, one thing you have to remember about all of this is um, it can be very difficult to move between uh, any system. It doesn't matter if it's just photos, it could be video. It can be, for instance, in my case, I struggle with email because I already you have a system set up. Now you got to learn how this whole other thing works, and you got to reconnect everything. So just keep that in mind. So let's yeah. talk about this last app. Yeah. So the last one is called Enlight uh, Photo Fox, and this is actually Enlight version two. Um, so, uh, Carrie, I'm going to actually let you kind of talk about this because uh, you mentioned that you have you know some systems and stuff that you use. Well, I will tell you um, that I probably don't have the system too, but I do have Enlight on my phone, and I paid whatever fee it was to, to have you know this work well and be great. And I'll also share with you that it's probably a little bit more advanced than I am, meaning I've gone in there, and I think the tutorials are fabulous, and I love them, and I really like the results that come from when I actually get in there and play around and, and really make a photo right. But I have to really want that photo to look or that image to look just so and really work on it because it is it's it's a little bit more advanced it's not your word swag or your font or whatever that you just get in there quick and get out it's it's it, you're working on an image and, and it's going to be maybe even artful when you're done um, people say it's the mobile photoshop um, I think they're right so um, that's my input Jessica have you uh, used um, Enlight at all so Enlight version 1 or Enlight version 2 I have not. I've been all about the quick and easy image apps. <laughs> so I've not played around. I've downloaded several, but I've not actually like got in and played around with it yet. Um, yeah, I have not. So okay, so let's let's uh, let's just ask one question then, real, real quick with that. So you were saying, you know, hey, you use you know you use the ones that are like kind of let you get in there, get the work done, and get out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What do you, you know as a business like what what do you think I should start with like should I you know is there like a basic app that I should start with maybe or uh, you know a couple of recommended apps that I should have in my toolbox? I use Word Swag all the time still because okay. you can bring in your own images in the background and just put some cool font on it. I mean, I would do they have a paid version where you can put your logo on there mm -hmm. and it just makes it super handy for like somebody that's traveling on the go wants to take a picture and you want to share it on instagram right away i mean i can seriously sit in a doctor's off post you know from my phone and all the images and everything just from you know word swag and a couple other apps but word swag is probably my go-to all the time really quick carrie what about um, i'll let carrie kind of do the next one and we can yeah 
swag. Um, they've even grown and given them more lately. So um, I've kind of gone back to it. And I kind of ebb and flow. Like I'll really get into an app for a while and I'll kind of jump away and use something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and my phone is actually, I would actually tell you what's in my phone, but it's actually charging right now. Um, I've liked, <laughs> I've liked Lumiere mm-hmm. um, just for a little image, um, like little action pieces to your image. And I've used it as my um, image, like my Facebook por- my profile photo. Mm-hmm. I've also used it elsewhere for, for different things just to put something up. But it's, it gives you just a little bit of motion in your image. It's kind of fun. Um, yeah. Prisma? Have you used Prisma? You know, I don't have it, but I like I like what it does. Yeah. yeah. That one's fun. Just to change a kind of a boring image to make it like more pretty and mm-hmm. interesting looking to stand out. Flipagram. You guys remember that one? <laughs> when you have a lot of images and you want to make a video out of it, I use that one all the time. Avery, Avery, or however you say it, it's A V I A R Y. I use that one a lot to edit images, blur things out. So if you had something you couldn't share in the image, you know, um, you can blur it out, you can t- touch it up, um, yeah, and make it it's super, super easy to use. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, I- Yes. I have something called Fonto. That's I haven't used it in a while though, but it's it's kind of like you can get in there and really it's it's almost like a lighter and light, but then you can add um, font to it and you know play around. Um, but you know that Instagram is really you can be a terrible photographer, which I am, and still come out looking good with the filters they have there. I, I use Instagram a little bit like like an app. Um, Snapchat too. <laughs> you know? Snapchat you can do the filters, just screenshot it, cut it out, and then you get your photo. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> well, there's I get this from um, from Starbucks. I think I won. It's it might even be a paid app. Maybe it's not anymore. It's called Brushstroke, and it makes um, your photos a little bit a little bit like Prisma, but it's more like arty and more painty like. And that's kind of a fun one that I'll pull out every once in a while just for some variety. And then mm-hmm. actually Brushstroke is, I think, is that the one with the parrot icon for the logo? Yeah, it's got a parrot. Yeah, so actually, uh, so speaking of what Carrie mentioned here, yeah, so Starbucks every so often, they do. They used to give away free apps. Um, they really don't do it anymore. They got rid of that whole piece. Uh, they had some really good uh, apps in there. But I will say Apple actually yeah. does give away free ones every so often. Um, you do have mm-hmm. to go to like the Apple app. It's like the Apple Store one. And sometimes you have to just poke your head around in the app and see if, um, so in the Apple Store app, uh, if you go swipe between some of the products, sometimes there happens to be a pretty nice little app. I think Brushstroke was free in there. Um, I think Procreate was one that was in there as well. I'm actually checking to see if there's a free one right now or not. Um, Triller. Have you heard of Triller? It's a video one. Mm-hmm. That one's fun. Yeah. I'll look that up. Splice is another one. I have that. that video. Nice. Oh. Uh, by the way, so uh, if you do go to the Apple Store app under Discover, there is a free app. It's a featured app. It's not one that they advertise on iTunes or, any, or their app store. Um, this one they're giving away is Air Pano City Book. Explore from the skies, leave your bag at home, and take in a bird's eye view of the world. So they don't always give away ones that are you know geared towards like photo or video editing. Sometimes they do that, but other times they also give you, you know, so in this case, this Air Pano City Book app. So um, very cool. I want to say thank you. you know, so that's the end of the topics for now. I just want to say thank you real quick. Thank you to uh, to Carrie, well, Jessica and Carrie, actually, both of you for, um, you know, definitely for like, you know, for uh, stepping in, obviously, tonight, Jessica, um, you know, because Nick was on, you know, happy birthday, Nick. Uh, hope you had a good birthday week. Okay. And uh, definitely Carrie. And, um, you know, uh, I, I got to say, I mean, I, I love, like, one, I love talking with you all because you all share so much, like, great knowledge and great information. Um, you know, you're just a wealth of knowledge. Um, so, you know, thank you so much. Um, Carrie, what's the best what's the best place for people to find you at? Uh, uh, well, my website, ideagirlmedia.com, okay. or they can tweet me there I, at ideagirlmedia. Um, also on Instagram, the same. I, but you'll also, um, regardless of where you are online, I lead you from my um, business to my personal, or my personal to my business, so you can access either. Very nice. Okay. We'll be sure to put okay. links. In the uh, in Facebook, but um, I just want to say thanks a lot, everyone, for uh, for joining tonight. I've got a couple of uh, wrap up announcements for everyone, and then we will uh, and you go, you'll have a great weekend. Uh, we'll make sure that um, we get a blog post recap and replay out to you tomorrow.
So thanks. That sounds good. Thank you. Good to see you guys. You too. So uh, just a quick heads up, everyone. If you go to next week, we're going to have a show at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at facebook.com forward slash social chefs. And uh, for those of you who want to get notified about the blog post recap, you can go to socialchefs.com forward slash subscribe. And if you have any questions about anything during the show, you can either drop them in the comments um, on the Facebook page, so facebook.com slash social chefs, or you can connect with us on all of our social channels. Um, they're all slash social chefs. So have a great weekend, everyone. We'll